Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have, Christ have mercy. mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have, Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, answered them, 
leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his mercy endures forever. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. O Lord, grant salvation. O Lord, grant prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord is God, and he has given us light. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it, and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. 
When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. So, the resurrection stories are really delightful. You know, they're really kind of wild in a way, and joyful, um, and piercing in some ways. And also, just kind of like with this one, very homey. You know, like, uh, there they are. <laughs> There's Jesus on the shore, and he cooks fish for the disciples. Well, I don't know, it reminded me of a couple things. Um, one being just a story. Uh, for what it's worth, you probably all had stories like this, but, um, but two, three summers ago, I forget, I went uh, backpacking with um, my brothers, Nick and Sam, and my and a good friend, Dan Grimm, and some other people, and we went up into Rewa Wilderness, which is up in the north part of, of Colorado, and we backpacked out to some lakes, the, the Rewa Lakes up there, um, and when we were camping, it was a beautiful place. When we were camping out there, there were, uh, it got very cold one of the days. It was kind of drizzling rain, and it was very gray. Uh, and we were towards the end of our trip, and we were running out of food. <laughs> and so that evening kind of boded to be a little bit miserable <laughs> with uh, the, all, the rain, all the rain and cold and lack of food. But fortunately, uh, my brothers and, and a couple of other uh, boys that were there on the trip had caught some trout during that day. So they caught a bunch of trout, and that evening um, we ended up cooking up the trout. We didn't have a pan, but fortunately, one of the rocks with the fire it got so hot that it burst. You see that with rocks, you know? It cracked off, and then it had like this slab of, of rock, and the slab of rock was like a perfect little skillet. You could put three fish on it and cook them up there, and we still had some seasoning like salt and pepper and other things, uh, hot, hot red pepper. Anyway, it was very good. And we put that on the fish. And they were really, really good. Okay, we had that that night. You know, it was wonderful. Like it saved that that evening. I mean, we probably would have survived. You know, but it wouldn't have been pleasant. So it was it was so good. There's a line from Narnia that I'm always reminded of when I eat trout. Uh, it's when they're with the, in the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and they are with the beavers. And Mr. Beaver goes out and he catches a bunch of fish for them and brings them in. And Mrs. Beaver fries them up. Um, they have a jug of creamy milk. For the children, Mr. Beaver stuck to beer, and a great deep lump of deep yellow butter in the middle of the table, from which everyone took as much as he wanted to go with his potatoes. And all the children thought, and I agree with them, that there's nothing to beat good freshwater fish if you eat it when it has been alive half an hour ago and has come out of the pan half a minute ago. And that's true. So, okay, there's your go, fishing story for today. No, the point, I think, like in relation to the gospel is that Jesus does the same thing, right? Like, just with like these little things, Jesus cooks breakfast for his disciples when he comes back. Here he is, the resurrected Lord. <laughs> and what does he do? He gets out a pan and he takes a couple of fish and he cooks them up, right? I mean, that's kind of amazing. You'd, accept, you'd expect something really big, I don't know, glorious pounding of, of thunder and stuff like that. I am the risen Lord. No, he's just there on the shore and he cooks them breakfast. Well, I think what that means is that God delights in little things. That God delights in little things like frying trout. That God loves these things, and if we delight in them too, and we give God thanks for these little things, we don't miss them, then we're acting like Jesus does here on the shore. 
I think it's really easy going through life to miss everything that happens. We're always looking ahead. We're always looking to the future. What's going to be, you know? What might be? We're always working and driving and striving for things. Well, maybe one gift of this time of like stepping back. I know the people are still busy and there's still lots to do. But maybe it can be a reminder, just the shift in the way that things happen right now. Um, to pay attention to what is right now. You know, something at the heart of the spiritual life, of living the spiritual life well, is just being present to the now, to what is. The grace of God is always in the present moment. It's not in the future because the future doesn't exist yet. It's not in the past because the past exists no more. The grace of God for you is right now. But we can miss that because we're always thinking of the past, we're always thinking of the future, instead of just being right now and delighting in what God has given. Often enough we're thinking about what we don't have. Right? Well, I don't have this, and I don't have that, and I wish I did. Well, fine. I mean, fine, okay. But that really just doesn't help anything, right? It doesn't, it doesn't allow us to delight in what is right now. So look around you. Look around you and say, what is there right now? For example, I think this is the most beautiful color in an Easter candle that I've seen ever, actually. You know, the, I just love the purple and the gold. Oh, it's delightful. Well, delight in the fact that that's there, you know. Not in the fact that you can't go out to a restaurant or something right now, you know. Okay, sometime if you go out to the restaurant, then you enjoy what's there, but enjoy what's now. I don't know. I've been eating lots of sweet potatoes. I've discovered the magic of the sweet potato. Oh, it's a wonderful thing. Especially when you cook it long enough and it gets all like creamy kind of inside, you know, it's not hard at all. You cook it for like an hour and a half, two hours, you know how big the potato is. Well, it's just delightful, you know. But I could just eat it and just be like, well, here, here we go. Or I could be like, Lord, thank you for this potato. This is incredible, you know. Well, same way with the fish, and I think Jesus being on the shore with breakfast, he wants us to delight in the little things. He wants us to rejoice in them and to give him praise because of all these things. So don't miss them. I guess that's what I'm saying. Don't miss the little things. But rejoice in them and give God glory for them and live in the now uh, with God and with them uh, because God wants to meet you uh, often in the little things in the now. stand and lift our petitions before our Heavenly Father. We pray, Lord, that the small gifts that you have given us we may not miss, but may delight in and give you thanks for. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, Lord, our, Lord, prayer. hear our prayer. We pray that as Jesus was with his apostles after his resurrection, that he might dwell with us and pour out us on us all the riches of his humanity and his divinity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, Lord, our, prayer. hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died that you would bring them to eternal glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Pray for all those who are sick, especially those who are suffering from COVID-19, that you would bring them healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the intention of this Mass, for Betsy Ruiz. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Father, in your goodness, hear your children who cry out to you, begging for your grace and mercy in Jesus' most sacred and holy name. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. 
Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, to your praise and glory of his name, for our good and all his holy church. church. Perfect within us, O Lord, we pray, the solemn exchange brought about by these paschal offerings, that we may be drawn from earthly desires to a longing for the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Right, that gives you praise. For through your 
Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice will be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we pray for you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration. They may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at his command, we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for men for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Give us 
this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. not worthy that you enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Jesus said to his disciples, Come and eat. And he took bread and gave it to them. Alleluia.
Keep safe, O oh Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So more? Maybe heaven? I don't know. Is it the end? We'll pray. You know, it's not so bad. Um, rejoice today in the glories of the resurrection. We rejoice, um, helped by the little things blesses us with today, um, and, and may those things always point us into the joy of Jesus' resurrection. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity, and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's Passion have drawn to a close, may you, who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast, come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth the masses and did alleluia, alleluia. <coughs> Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Dominus <laughs>